What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends and my haters. Look, guys, I want to talk to you about uh, something that happened a couple of days ago. You guys might remember I did a video talking about how I felt about Tanahasi, Ta Tallahassee Coates, <laughs> Tahanasi, Tanahisi Coates. Um, taking over writing on uh, Superman, the new Superman project. And of course, Jar Jar Abrams is going to be producing it. I'm not the biggest fan of these two individuals, and I don't have a hell of a lot of reason to believe that this thing is going to go well. All right. The whole idea is that they could possibly be doing a black Superman. Um, the black Superman thing, uh, at the video that I did, I wasn't necessarily bashing the whole idea of a black Superman. Of course, I'm not crazy about like a black Clark Kent, a, a black Kal El. You know, no, no, I'm not crazy about that kind of thing. But I do understand that there were black supermen uh, under different identities in the comics. Okay, so if it's done right by somebody who is familiar with the uh, material, you know, somebody who cares about the culture, somebody who's respectful to the creation of Superman and the lore and the legend of it all, someone who respects the audience, you know, all of the audience, then um, I could be cool with that. Okay, but based on what I know, of uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates and of course Jar Jar Abrams, there's not a whole lot to be excited about here. All right, so I did the video. A lot of people got stuck on the Black Superman thing, of course. You know, nothing is more predictable than, well, why can't a black man be a Superman? What's wrong with you? You know, it's like, oh my God, you know, yeah, I guess it's just the way of the walk, man. That's just how it is. People don't actually watch the video and if they do, they're not listening. They're just listening to actually object. You know, you got a whole bunch of people out there who are very proud to be contrarian, you know, to the point where it's really a fault. They think they're so damn clever. At this point, guys, I've been doing this for over four years. I already know everybody by name who's going to come into my comment section just to disagree, you know, and they never disappoint. So there it is, you know. So a couple of days ago, I did the video and um, there's this one comment that I got. And uh, I want to use this as a teachable moment because every now and then this type of thing comes up, you know. So I feel like, yeah, let me put this thing out there so we can address this real quick. And um, this person says to me, oh, you're the house slave of the comic gators I see. Oh, you are the house slave of the comic gators I see. Trying to kiss up to Pecker Woods doesn't make you any less black or make them like you any more. So this person uh, says that trying to kiss up to Pecker Woods doesn't make you any less black or make them like you anymore. Okay, all right. Like I said before, this kind of thing tends to come up here and there. And um, I'm glad, you know, I was actually waiting for this. You know, as a matter of fact, I posted it on Twitter and I said it on Twitter, you know, cause I'm waiting for it. I'm like three, two, one, and there it is. You ever notice how you never need a seat to wait for a dumbass? Here's what JJ and Tanahisi are bringing into my house. This is my point. You, sir, don't belong here. You never did and never will. Now, what you just said to me, do you think this makes me weaker or stronger? Considering the fact that I've been going through this my entire life, all right? It's because of the pieces of shit in the community like you that I actually retreated from all of that into the world of fiction and fantasy. You know, it's like I just knew that this couldn't be all there is to life. I just knew it, you know. So thank God I was born with an imagination. So I started using my imagination and thinking about other worlds and other realities and whether there's life out there and stuff. And um, I was overjoyed to find out that people wrote books about that. People did comics and cartoons and, you know, and it, it was just a fantastic world, you know, that I discovered. And I was very, very comfortable there. I was a loner when I was growing up. You know, I didn't have a bunch of people that I hung out with because a lot of people were either thinking or influenced by people who think like you, bitch, you know. So, yeah, I found myself my own nice place and uh, there I dwelled, you know. And like I said, being a loner, I came up with my own philosophy, my own loves, and my own passions, and it was just icing on the cake to find out that there's a whole community of people out there who feel similarly to how I feel. It doesn't mean that you get welcomed in with open arms and everybody loves you and all that stuff. No, no, no. It just means that there are people out there who also feel in a similar way, you know? 
and just like anybody else. Either you can click with them or you don't click with them. Now, the problem is, is that after years and years and years, you we've come to this time now where people like you, bitch, find yourself criti criticizing the creators that were ostracized from society that built upon their imagination and built new worlds and dared to speculate and fantasize about what life could be, the potential of life. You know, what, what, could, what could we evolve to or devolve to? You know, the imagination was rich. You saw the Twilight Zone. You saw Star Trek. You saw Star Wars. You know, all types of fantasy, uh, you know, fiction, you know, works that would come out. You know, the cartoons and superhero, the superhero genre, you know, was blowing up and everything. And um, these people, they visualized that and found a way to bring that to book, to screen, you know, big screen and small screen. And um, they built empires off of that. And where were you? Where were people like you, you know, who were uh, critical of that kind of thing? You know, when little boys and girls, you know, of, of any color uh, showed interest in these things, there would be people like you who would pop up and make fun of us, you know, who would uh, criticize us, belittle us, act like we were detached from reality. And now that it's become big business, people like you want to run around and talk about how come I'm not in it? Why, why am I not? You didn't want to be in it, stupid. You know what I mean? I know this for a fact. I was, I was brutalized, you know, as a kid within my family because outside my home, nobody messed with me. You know what I mean? Best believe ever. Please take my word for that. But unfortunately, I had it in my family. You know, I talked about this on videos before. You know, my father didn't understand, you know, where I was coming from and everything like that. And um, I was essentially squashed every day, you know, for loving uh, fantasy fiction and stuff. And I love my father, you know. We get along great and everything, but those were the times that we were living in, you know? So now everybody wants to scream Wakanda forever. You know, everybody wants to scream you want a black Superman and all this stuff. When Where were you before? You know, that's my point, you know? So when you see something like this, it's a great thing. It's a great thing to highlight because this is a throwback to what we all used to have to go through back in the day. I just can't be my own person. You can't respect my individuality. I have to be a house slave. I'm kissing up the pecker woods. I'm trying to be less black than what I am. You know, you can't point to the creators and say they're racist when this is what you do. This is what you're doing. I'm proud of being who I am. I took the long way around to recognizing myself as a human being, which is why I can have love for everybody. It has to start with you first, you know, and I had to realize that before you can project onto anybody else or other people, you have to achieve that for yourself. You know, before you can criticize somebody else for not putting you in the work that they did in the work that they created, you have to look at what you've done to contribute to that culture. And you have done nothing. People like you have done shit to contribute to that culture. You just lay in wait to criticize other people who have been in the culture for their entire lives. So when I talk about Milestone Comics and my videos only get something like 50 views, where are you when I'm talking about black creators? When my brother Fatal J drops Ninja Blast, where will you be? Will you be, uh, will you be supporting that? Or will you be waiting for what white people do and wonder where you are when you're not supporting your very own. And then you want to turn around and talk about somebody else being ashamed to be black. You can kiss my ass with that. This has been my entire life. You're just the visitor. And this is what I was talking about. Why should you get black Superman? Why should you get black Spider-Man? Let me tell you something. You don't deserve it because you contributed nothing to it. And those who are actually contributing to it, you don't support. So you can entirely miss me with that, okay? Do we understand each other? Now the person who put that comment out to me, they deleted their comment. Maybe they wisely reconsidered what they were saying. Maybe they actually watched the video. I know a lot of people didn't, 
All they did was go straight to, why can't we have a black Superman? Instead of talking about visitors like Tanahasi, Tanahisi Coates coming in, just like you, who have no investment in the culture, but want to pick it apart and criticize those who actually create it instead of paying homage to them and respecting them. That's what I object to, if anybody is having a hard time understanding that. He has no business being here, based upon what I have seen and heard of him. He can be a so-called intellectual. He can be a so-called lecturer. He can talk about white supremacy all he wants. But this house, this house right here that I've been living in my entire life, your intellectual credentials don't mean anything here. Okay? This is where I have resided. There's nothing you can tell me about this. And there's nothing you can tell me about the people that I have encountered my entire life. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to go on and uh, make that clear. All right. For anybody who inevitably will come in here with the same old criticisms, you know, you're the ones who are stuck on the creative plantation. My message is that you can create your own. You might even be able to do better. But somehow that makes me the house slave. You need to sit back and really, really think about your way of thinking. <sighs> All right, guys. I think I've said enough for now. You can get in the comment section and you can like, you can share, and you can subscribe as always. You can catch me on Twitter. You can catch me on Odyssey. Maybe I'll leave the link to that. I just made my account for them as well. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. Thank you for listening as always, guys. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.